I thought you might find it interesting if I gave you a bit of an overview of the turbo setup on the Raptor. And just as a disclaimer, I'm no expert on turbos, but I am learning from online information and other people. Anyway, uh, Garrett has this interesting website where they talk about all the different calculations that you can go through to figure out uh, what uh, turbo sizing that you should use and what setup. They begin with the things that you need to know before you can do any calculations, and those things include your horsepower target, your engine displacement, and so on. And then there's several items like the engine efficiency and the intake temperature and the brake specific fuel consumption, which are fairly easy to get for a diesel engine. And ultimately you'd be, uh, be calculating the airflow, how much air is moving through the turbo into the engine. And then on top of that, what the boost pressure is gonna be. So between the two of those, you can actually look at the different um, maps that they provide, pressure maps for the turbos and determine which one to use and be able to see how well it's going to perform. And there's a handful of spreadsheets or calculators available on the web that allow you to put in these different parameters and calculate what your airflow is going to be and also what your pressures are going to be. And from those you can figure out uh, things like the pressure ratio and be able to plot those on the uh, turbo pressure map that is um, available for each different turbocharger. So I've been playing with those a little bit to get the results or get the values I'm looking for and I even sort of created my own spreadsheet there. It allows me to put in all of those different uh, figures that we have available and estimate of horsepower and then come up with the uh, airflow and also the, the um, boost values and ultimately the pressure ratios. So uh, you can use those values against the charts that uh, Garrett provides for their turbos. On their website, they provide this nice example of working with a 2-liter engine, also a 5-liter engine. Uh, but the 2-liter engine is interesting because it, actually the performance that they're looking for is very similar to what we're looking for. And if you work uh, through the numbers here, you can see they basically um, come up with a very similar uh, airflow of about 43 or I think 41 that they have there. And then they ultimately work out um, you know, what the pressure ratio um, is going to be so I think they ended up with a 3.1 there and so they start looking at the various different maps there and so they start out with the with the default um, or the the stock turbo there and you can see that the um, that those values plot way outside of the map and so that's not a very good turbo to use and then they uh, switch down through and look at a different turbo there and this is actually the one that we have right now the 3076 R and it's it plots reasonably well there, but they actually look at another one here. This is the 3071, uh, and actually that the high-end horsepower plots right where it sort of needs to be there. And so they've decided to sort of choose that one. And then they also choose, or they also calculate sort of like a lower RPM um, power setting and plot that as well. And you can see it sort of fits nicely in that boost graph there or that pressure graph. So for our three liter diesel engine, we're initially gonna shoot for a maximum power of about 375 horsepower and a cruise uh, of about 235 horsepower. So maximum RPM would be about 4250 and RPM at cruise 2800. So the pressure at sea level is 14.7 PSI and up at 25,000 feet, it's 5.45 PSI. The airflow required at sea level is about 40 pounds per minute and at 25,000 feet, it's about uh, 25. So the boost required would be about uh, 27 at sea level and about uh, 35 up at uh, 25,000 feet, which is actually uh, quite a lot of boost um, up there in the thin air. So the pressure ratio down at sea level is about 3.2, which is not a problem for a turbo, but then up at uh, altitude it's 9, uh, which is a big problem for a single turbo. So how we're going to solve this is we're actually going to use a compound turbo setup where we actually have one turbo uh, pumping into the other one and I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. This is the pressure map chart for the stock turbo that comes with the uh, 3 liter diesel engine and as you can see um, it doesn't even reach up into uh, the pressure ratio of 3 and that's kind of where we really need to be so that's why that turbo is just a, a, just lacking or yeah, definitely lacking for what uh, we're trying to do. 
so uh, you go with a larger turbo and uh, you get better performance so let me show you here the next one so this is one that possibly we may go for in the 2863 and the red line there is kind of estimating there where our horsepower uh, would be at or at least where our pressure ratios would be at so that's about 3.1 is where that red line is and you can see that airflow in pounds per minute there goes between about uh, 24 and about 40 and so that would be the range that we would be looking at um, between you know 25 would be up there at 25,000 feet and uh, 40 would be down at uh, sea level so this turbo actually gives us a pretty good fit for what we're looking for we may end up using it now if we shoot for a little bit more power this is what we would have so at sea level 400 horsepower and RPM 4250 and at 25,000 feet uh, possibly 300 horsepower and 2800 RPM and again uh, sea level the uh, air pressure is 14.7 psi and up at altitude it's uh, 5.45 psi so the airflow would be uh, 43.2 and uh, about 32 uh, up at altitude so this would require a boost of about 30 psi uh, low down and about 46 up at 25,000 so that's getting a little high um, ultimately the pressure ratio at sea level is about 3.4 which is actually doable and up at altitude 11 but again it's the square root of that so it's about 3.4 so if we have two uh, turbos pushing 3.4 we can actually do it and if you look at this uh, GTX 3071R you can actually see here I've plotted um, kind of where those that range would be between uh, you know the low end power and the high end power and we're a little bit outside of uh, the sort of sweet spot on this particular one uh, but anyway just what it means is we need to do a little bit more research uh, to figure out exactly which turbo to use but it is possible to get those uh, sort of horsepower um, numbers uh, from the engine that we're looking at and uh, even up at altitude uh, which is kind of exciting but again it needs a little bit more research so let me explain this compound turbo setup and here you can see this is a side view of the mock-up of the aircraft here and you can see there's basically two turbos put in here and uh, you see the picture of the engine there just in 2D so uh, basically what's happening here just one turbo behind the other and I'll show you here we change views and uh, so this is sort of going in the 3D and now those pictures get confusing so I'll hide those for you here in a second so you can uh, just see just the turbos themselves so the goal is that we need to have um, a pressure ratio of about nine altogether and most of these turbos can only push a pressure ratio of about three um, fortunately when you put a compound turbo set up like this the, the two pressure ratios multiply against each other so if they're each three the total ends up being nine so um, ultimately what's happening is the first um, turbo is pushing from about 5.45 psi this is at 25,000 feet it multiplies that out and even with losses you still end up with about 14 um, psi so you basically got sea level pressure and then the job of the second turbo is just to boost the engine and just as if it were uh, down at sea level so let me explain how it all flows here so this is the first turbo here and then that's the exhaust intake so coming out of the exhaust manifold uh, the air goes into that first turbo into the hot section and that's the hot section there and then it basically spools that up and then the exhaust comes out of there into this section and then goes into the second turbo again into its hot section which is there and then ultimately that waste air uh, goes out of the exhaust and actually the advantage of that is now you've got like two mufflers on your exhaust so it'll be super quiet because it's going through the two different turbos and on the air intake side first of all here we have uh, this little air cleaner sitting here so that's your air cleaner and then the fresh air just goes in there uh, into the cold side of the second turbo where it's um, compressed and then it comes out of there and goes into the cold side of the first turbo and it's compressed from there and then the air coming out of there will go into the intercooler where it will be cooled before going into the engine and again with this setup we can see uh, pressure increases of up to 9 or even 12 times uh, the outside air pressure so we still have more research to do and in fact we'll be getting our engine running uh, with the single turbo that we currently have first 
and making sure that that's all dialed in before we uh, start putting these uh, twin turbo or this compound turbo set up on there. But uh, if we can see um, sort of sea level power around about sort of 350, 370, maybe 400 horsepower at sea level and somewhere between about 240 and 300 uh, up at 25,000 feet, uh, we'll be super happy. So anyway, hope you enjoyed uh, this little bit of overview on the turbo. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.